guys, welcome to Not Sorry, Love Lori. My name is Lori. Hey guys, my name is Bar. And today we're gonna be doing a little Q and A, and it's about me. So I live with different mental illnesses, including borderline personality disorder, complex PTSD, generalized anxiety disorder, dissociative disorder, and substance abuse disorder. Abrar does not. <laughs> I mean, you're you're addicted to nicotine, but yeah, pretty much. And that's, caffeine. Yeah. No shame. Before we get to the questions. Don't forget to subscribe and like and leave us a comment. And what do you think? Should we get into it? Let's get into it. Let's go. So for me, I think the biggest thing was that A, you were pretty honest and you know, you laid everything out flat on the table. And I think it was because of the honesty that I felt that even though you were in a lot of pain, there was still a lot of hope. And it was as if you wanted to live, but you were struggling because you had a lot of debilitating conditions. To me, uh, the honesty was the biggest thing that made me think of you as, you know, this, this great person and uh, just somebody who needs support. And, you know, a lot of people in our society, unfortunately, need support to flirt. And it's okay if you need support. Um, I think because we, we are a global community and I feel that because of capitalism and, and all these different, like the, the way that society is now functioning, um, if you're not able to support yourself, you're kind of left you know, to your own devices. And I feel that's very wrong. And I, I feel that we all need to be supportive of each other, regardless of our, who we are, where we're from, and whatever it is that we're self, you know, going through. So that's an easy one. Um, I think the core tenets of our relationship, uh, uh, probably two, is honesty and respect and trust. And I think they all coexist. Uh, one can't be without the other. So it's a really good question. To me, uh, the, you know, when Roy, you know, honestly described all the stuff that she was going through and what she had been through, it didn't really phase me. Uh, I think primarily because, um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with mental health challenges because in my family, uh, you know, there's been some people that have had that and currently, you know, uh, do face them. And to me, having a mental health challenge is the same as having any other challenge in life, whether it's a physical one. Um, I don't really distinguish between, between all those things. And to me, uh, like I actually love the fact that she was very honest about you know all the stuff that she'd gone through, and uh, and no, so I would say that it didn't really uh, I wasn't phased, and I didn't really think that it would really play a part in me being with her. Uh, another good question. So I will basically the first thing I'll ever do is is validate because we feel how we feel, and you know. Um, whatever it is that we're feeling, uh, there's an, you, you don't have to rationalize it or try to rationalize it for the other person. You just have to essentially validate them and make them feel supported. Uh, for me, what that means is that you listen, you say, hey, I, you know, I, and I understand that you're feeling this way and um, you don't try to help them get through it. All you have to do is just essentially be a supportive presence uh, while someone is going through that. And that's exactly what I do for Lori or at least what I try to do. And the second part of the question, so how did I learn this? I have no idea if I would be honest. Uh, I guess, uh, I don't know. Like I, I honestly don't have an answer for that. That is a good question. So I think that's a lot to do with self-assurity and, and ego, I would say. So to me, obviously I'm not gonna sit here and say what anybody else says and like something to me, it won't affect me. Yes, it will, but I, I think over the years I've learned to not be attached to the emotion that I feel if when someone says anything negative or critical about me. Instead, what I try to do is understand where that person is coming from and why they're saying that. Because once you're in their shoes, you can understand why they're saying, you know, whatever the, it is that they're saying. Uh, so it's a bit of rationalizing it, but also feeling it as well. So it's, it's okay to feel a little bit shitty if somebody says something critical about you or bad about you. But uh, I think just looking at it from the person's perspective can help you understand why they're saying it. And I think it helps me rationalize it, which means that I'm not, I don't take it as personal. I think that's where uh, setting boundaries is very important. So um, I think it's important to be able to support people because if you are going through something um, like an addiction, obviously the, the addiction isn't really the problem. It's just a consequence of an underlying issue. So in order to, you know, help the, the person or be supportive, you have to keep in mind what the underlying issue is and then treat the addiction as a con as the consequence that it is. So you just have to ensure that you are setting a boundary to say, this is my limit 
to which I can take this because otherwise it'll be very unhealthy for you if you are not sure of what is something that's crossing the line for you. So as long as you set that and you're firm about it and you communicate that to the other person as well, um, I think that's how you can, you know, maintain that fine line between enablement and actually supporting somebody. So it's, it's a lot to do with you as opposed to the other person, I think in this case. I, to be honest, um, wouldn't say that supporting people, even if they have a lot of debilitating mental health or you know, even if it's a physical condition, uh, I think it, it all depends on where you as a person are coming from. So uh, obviously there will be some tough times where sometimes uh, you know, it, it will be difficult, but I think um, as long as you are clear in your head about why you're doing what you're doing, which is, you know, why are you supporting somebody? Or I think it's, in, as long as you're clear and communicative and you're communicative to your partner um, uh, and honest about how you're feeling, I think then nothing is truly hard. That is a tough question. Um, I would probably say out of everything, you know, I could, you know it, this, this will turn into a long video if I start doing that, but I think the biggest thing is the honesty and authenticity, because I think that's what I have, have picked up as well. I think uh, I've learned a lot from her because of the fact that she's been so authentic with the way, you know, all the stuff that she's been through, all the, the conditions. And I wouldn't even say that. I think just living life on its merit, where I think in like, you know, where I come from, we play a lot of cricket, which is you, you kind of, you know, it's like pitching and someone's like throwing a ball and you have to hit it. So a lot of people, uh, when they're trying to hit the ball, they'll premeditate or they're, they'll actually think about it first, you know, to see what kind of shot I'm going to play. Um, but I think the, the best batsmen in my part of the world are the ones that play the ball on its merit. So like whatever is thrown at you, you then play it with however you're feeling. So I think that's how I would equate how Laurie lives her life, where she lives life on its merit. Like there's no predeterminations. Um, it's all just trying to be who you are and trying to, you know, just be a nice person overall. And I think that's the biggest quality that I would say. And I've picked up on that as well. I've lived my life very authentically in the last three years, more than what I probably would have been lived or have lived in the past. Uh, so my advice would be, um, again, would be just to be honest and honesty, respect, and trust is what I would say are the three tenets that you always have to keep close to you. Uh, you know, in, in this sort of any, whatever relationship it may be, a friendship, if you're, you know, if, so if it's your partner or parents, because of the way that life is, um, you know, even if you're providing, and, and I think one of the other things that uh, is really important is to understand that if you are not suffering from, you know, certain conditions or whatever conditions they may be, you then sometimes will have to maybe meet the other person a little bit more than halfway because you know like you, that's where your understanding uh, comes from like yeah that's where your empathy will come from right and sometimes you have to do it for a long time and um, that's the thing where i think to you it, to me it doesn't feel like i'm doing it more than halfway right that's and if you truly feel that then you know you'll you'll be able to support the person be, just like it will be natural to you you're not going to be if you're forcing yourself to to support somebody and you're having to do more of it, then you probably will have to, like you need to maybe question why, you know, what, what is it about that relationship that is keeping you there? Because I think, and that's where I think if, if you're honest with yourself and with the, with the other person, uh, you'll be able to come, you know, you'll be able to figure out that answer and that can probably help. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and like and leave us a comment. And yeah, any kind of like parting words, I guess? No, um, just, you know, leave us a comment if there's other questions that you guys want to answer, for us to answer, and uh, we'll do another one. Yeah, sounds good. All right, be nice to yourselves. No shame, okay? Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.